Is peace just the absence of war? This question occupied the mind of renowned researcher Johann Galtung. Galtung is a Norwegian sociologist recognized as the principal founder of peace and conflict studies. He also created the concept of peace building, which aims to prevent the root causes of violent conflict through the establishment of sustainable peace. As an advocate for peace by peaceful means, Galtung defines his approach in the following way. By peace, we mean the capacity to transform conflicts with empathy and creativity, without violence, a never-ending process. By transforming conflicts, we mean enabling the parties to go ahead in a self-reliant, acceptable, and sustainable manner. By with empathy, we mean the ability to understand the conflict also in the ways the parties understand the conflict themselves. By creativity, we mean channeling conflict energy toward new, innovative ways of satisfying basic human needs for all. By without violence, we mean that this process should avoid both any threat or use of direct violence that hurts and harms, and any use of structural violence that demobilizes the parties. But how can this empathetic, creative, and nonviolent transformation of conflicts be achieved? According to Johan Galtung, Part of the answer is to change the way we think about peace processes. He suggested a new framework for understanding these processes through the concepts of negative and positive peace. While negative peace simply refers to the absence of overt conflict and direct physical violence, positive peace refers to the absence of indirect structural violence. This kind of violence comes in the form of stereotypes, discrimination, exploitation and repression. Positive peace, then, is not just the absence of war, but the presence of social justice. Building on Galtung's concepts, the Institute for Economics and Peace defines positive peace as the attitudes, institutions and structures that create and sustain peaceful societies. So, what exactly are these attitudes, institutions and structures? According to the Institute, they are the eight pillars of positive peace. Well-functioning government, equitable distribution of resources, free flow of information, good relations with neighbors, human capital, acceptance of the rights of others, low levels of corruption, sound business environment. Well-functioning government can be broken down into two major domains. The first refers to the government's effectiveness, its activities and the rule of law. The second domain refers to the way in which the government shares the same vision as its citizens, that it is accountable and allows its citizens to have a voice in decision-making. This might entail how it manages public resources, responds to external shocks, or engages the community in decision-making. This also extends beyond the political sphere to that of civil servants who administer the day-to-day -day operation of government. Equity describes the extent to which individuals and groups are treated fairly, regardless of their personal characteristics, such as social position, race, religion, or gender. How equitable resources and opportunities are distributed throughout a society may define how easily an individual or group accesses a range of vital goods and services, such as land, water, education, healthcare, and justice all of which are important contributors to human development. The measures for the free flow of information capture how easily citizens can gain access to information, including whether the media is free and independent. It also captures the extent to which citizens are informed and engaged in the political processes and the diversity of access to information. This can be measured through internet access, or simply the ability to express political views. In this sense, the free flow of information accounts for the degree of access to information as well as the independence of that information from vested political and economic interests. This pillar refers to the relationship between individuals, communities, and states. While this pillar is expected to be strongly linked to the acceptance of the rights of others, it is different as it measures the quality of relationships between the groups within a country as well as the quality of the relations with its neighboring countries. An indicator of these relations could be the extent of regional, economic and political integration, attitudes to foreigners and intergroup cohesion. Human capital describes a country's stock of skills, knowledge and behaviors. This concept is associated with individuals' education, health and attitudes which materially impact their contributions to their communities. 
This category includes both the formal institutions that ensure basic rights and freedoms, as well as the informal social and cultural norms that relate to the behaviors of citizens. These factors relate to tolerance between the different ethnic, linguistic, religious, and socio-economic groups within a country. Corruption describes the abuse of a position to gain undue advantage. This might occur through government, business, or community relationships. It might include a range of actions, such as government officials asking for additional fees to process documents, police ignoring illegal activity in return for payment, or political candidates directly bribing voters. In societies with high corruption, resources may be inefficiently allocated, resulting in essential services breaking down or schools and hospitals missing out on appropriate funding. A sound business environment is seen as crucial to providing both individuals and communities with a means to peacefully, equitably, and efficiently sharing a country's resources. Analysis shows that factors associated with a sound business environment are also associated with peace. These factors include the level and quality of infrastructure, business sophistication and innovation, the quality of employment opportunities, and the level of regulations applied to businesses. These eight pillars were found by the Institute for Economics and Peace to be strongly associated with peaceful environments. They are both interdependent and mutually reinforcing. Due to the connected nature of these factors, the weakening or strengthening of any one pillar will also weaken or strengthen the other pillars. Positive peace, therefore, is dependent on the strength of all pillars. The relationship can be compared to a brick wall. Take out one brick and the strength of the entire wall is impacted.